In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do this insane infinite zooming effect that was done in the Lil Tecca Bad Time music video. I'm gonna show you all the steps you need to make this effect look extra saucy and how you can do it on your own footage. But before we get into the video, I wanna let you know about my new After Effects plugin, Shake Sauce 2. It's by far the easiest way to apply Shake in all of After Effects. It has a brand new UI, you can save custom presets, and best of all, there's a seven day free trial link down below. That way you can try it out 100% risk-free. If you don't absolutely love it, you can cancel at any time, but you're gonna love it. Let's get into After Effects. So here's the effect done in the Bad Time music video. It's an insane, like infinite zooming kind of through the window. You can do this basically with anything that has like a frame. So you can do this with a door, a wheel, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and find a scene where there's just the window and I can grab a frame from. So something like this would be perfect. You can see, you can see all four edges of the image here. So you wanna have something that you can kind of like cut out like this. You can see our window, this is what we're gonna cut out. So to get started, I'm gonna right click on our image right on the scene where we want, go to time and then go to freeze frame. This is gonna basically just make it an image and then we're gonna zoom in a little bit and use the pen tool and just click on our layer and then mask out around our window. The better job you do, the better it will look, but it should be rather simple to do. You basically just wanna err on the side of having not the image here because it will look weird. So let's go ahead and cut around here, cut around the window. And then just like that, finish it up. So depending on the way you masked it, you might be like masking the opposite. So if it's not like cut out black through the window for you, you can go ahead and go to subtract. And now you can see like the window is what we want masked out. So you can see I did a kind of rough job and you can see the border of the image. So I could either go through and remask or we can go to mask settings here and go to the mask ex expansion and just expand it out a little bit. And that should fix our issue just like that. So now the next thing you wanna do is duplicate that layer and then on the bottom layer, go ahead and scale it down. So go to the transform options and then just scale it down so you can kind of see it again. So it kind of repeats. And I'm actually gonna go to this first image and just scale it up a little bit so it starts a little bit more zoomed in, kind of like this. And you can even play around with the position. So just using the tool to kind of center it a little bit. If you wanna go ahead and add these proportional grids to get a good idea of like where the, the direct center is, you can do that. And then let's go ahead and just kind of put it here. I'm gonna turn off the grids for now, but it is a useful tool. And then we can go to that second one and kind of scale it like this. So you basically just wanna be able to see the image again, depending on how many times you want it to repeat, you can make it like very, very close where it's like, you know, looks like this and you can barely even see it duplicate or you can kind of scale it down kind of how I'm going to and have a little bit more of like showing here. You can also use this toggle transparency to see what it's gonna look like that way. It's just not black. This is where like your final image would go. So let's go ahead and just continue to control D. So duplicating it and then just scaling down. And if you wanna be like precise, you can type in these exact numbers and like have it equal distance each time. But for the sake of the tutorial, I think you can kind of just scale it down like this and just be a little bit more rough with it. We can also go here and go to the transform options. Like in the music video, he did a lot of rotation. So we can do something like negative three, positive three, negative three. That way it's kind of like off center, like back and forth kind of rocking. So we can go ahead and duplicate that again, bring down the scale, bring it to positive three, and let's do it one more time. Duplicate, negative three scale. So now you can see you have this image of all these duplicating layers. And for our example, it looks like it didn't go like dead center. So if you want to like change the ending frame to be a little bit more center, you can do that. And then you're probably just going to want to go through and do all of the other frames as well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does make it look a little bit better in my opinion. So just kind of centering everything that way when you zoom in, it's going to be like into the image itself. So then I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the grids again. And we're going to make these all 3D layers. So if you don't see this 3D box here, you can go to toggle switches and modes until you see that. And then let's go ahead and right click and create a new camera layer and then click okay. And if you go ahead and open the transform options, let's go ahead and keyframe everything. And then pressing C on our keyboard will bring up these tools. I'm gonna go ahead and go till I see this one. You can also go up here and it's basically the dolly zoom. So let's go ahead and do that. And then maybe go 10 frames forward, maybe 20 frames forward and just zoom through until you want to. You don't have to fully complete the zoom through. You can if you want, but something like that might look good. And now we can play this and you can see how we have this like kind of like parallax zooming looking effect 
It looks a little rough right now, but it's starting to look a lot better. Depending on how intense you want it, you can change you know, how much it actually zooms in. And I like to keep it like center. So let's go ahead and go to the proportional grid and we can kind of center it like this. And let's also easy ease these keyframes. And then let's go ahead and turn on the motion blur here. And then also do that for all of our layers. And that's just gonna make it look a lot more realistic of a zoom. You can see how now there's motion blur in all these layers. And then if you wanna change the motion blur, you can go to composition up here, composition settings, advanced, and then change the shutter angle. The higher you make this number, you can see the more blurry it will get. And the lower you make it, the less blurry, zero being no blur at all. The most realistic looking blur is normally 180. So that's what I'm gonna leave it at. So now we have this zoom and you can see it kind of crashes. If you want to make it where it goes all the way through, you can also do that. So like you can make it like a full transition, like, this and just make all the edges go away and with something like that you might have to make a little bit longer of a transition let's actually go ahead and do that make it like 30 35 frames long or something like that right around there and now we have this kind of like crash zoom through the window you can see it kind of has a little bit lack of like motion because it is a still frame so with some effects you can add on to kind of have it have a little bit more motion is making an adjustment layer and putting it above all your images and dragging on an effect like optics compensation reversing the lens distortion and then kind of keyframing it to start kind of like this and then towards the end maybe even be a little bit more intense so you'll see as it zooms through it has a little bit more bend to it and another effect that would work really well if you have universe chromatic aberrations works really well with this. It kind of does the same thing as optics compensation, but has a little bit more of like this distort in the colors, which I think looks really good. You can change the intensity of that with the master scale. And then also if you want to add a little bit more motion to each of these layers, we can go ahead and throughout the whole entire thing, keyframe the Z rotation from like three or like from like negative three to three and basically reverse the value so if it's at three you can put it to negative three so like as it goes through you'll see the windows kind of like shift back and forth and you'll see that a little bit more as we do all of them so let me go ahead and just do them all real quick so basically keyframing at the beginning whatever z value you had it at and then going to the end and then just reversing it you don't have to like completely reverse it but if you want it to be a little bit more of a, a noticeable rotation, then you can do it that way. So you, now you can see how they kind of like bend into place like this and move. And you can see how halfway through they kind of all have this like center point. So if you wanna like offset the rotation a little bit, you can like change the length. So it's not all like super linear. You can change like the ending points and the starting points. That way they kind of all move at like different rates. And now if you have it, it's a lot less of like all like lining up exactly perfectly halfway through. And you can even go through and now easy ease all of these keyframes. Just gonna make it look a little bit smoother as well. And now it's time to just add a clip from the video and put it all the way at the bottom. And now you can see you have the footage playing behind but it's kind of like looks weird because it's not scaled to the window. So what I'm gonna do is leave this not a 3D layer, but I'm gonna go ahead and change the scale and the position. So let's go ahead and keyframe scale and position, scale it down so it fits kind of to the frame of the window. And then we can go all the way to the end of the transition. So just finding where the zoom on the camera completely stops and then just resetting the scale and position. And that makes it fit a little bit better. And then you can see the effect kind of looks a lot better now, but it's still like not scaled properly. So we just need to go through like halfway through and scale it to the frame of the window and maybe even change the position just a few times throughout that way it like can you can see how it kind of is missing here. So it didn't scale in properly here and just going in between these and just making sure it fits really well. Now you can see you have this really cool zoom through effect. And what I'm gonna do is actually pre-compose the camera, the adjustment layer, and all of the 3D scenes. And then that way, when you zoom through, the optics compensation isn't gonna be on it. And then because we pre-composed everything, you can see how this background is kind of exposed now. So what we need to do is actually just make an adjustment layer in between the pre-comp and the background layer, and then add optics compensation onto it, reverse the lens distortion, and then just keyframe it in a way so it kind of fits like this. You can see here, and just have it, you can have it be a little bit more intense here. And then throughout the transition, it will just fit to the frame. You can see here, it doesn't match up for a second. So we need to either go ahead and just change the keyframe of the video itself or change the optics compensation. But now it fits a lot better and we can go through here on the adjustment layer and also 
just bring down that lens distortion so it fits properly. And maybe we just need to have it take a second longer. And now that transition's really starting to come together, there's a few more things I'm gonna do to kind of sauce up the transition just one step further. And the first one being going through and going into the pre-comp and then adding a shake from Shake Sauce. I'm gonna add something pretty subtle, like a constant one, like the smooth hands here, just over the windows. And then I'm gonna change up the position amplitude and frequency a little bit and keyframe it at the beginning and then go to the end and add a little bit more like intensity in the shake towards the end. So let's go ahead and bring up the amplitude. So I ended up making the position amplitude 24 and the frequency three, and then just keyframed up the amplitude to somewhere around 42. That way, as it kind of zooms through, it just adds a little bit more intensity in the shake. And as you can see here, when we go ahead and render it through, it'll just add a little bit more motion to the zoom through here. So now when we play that, you can see there's just a little bit more like motion in the windows and it doesn't seem as much of like a stagnant kind of like still image. It almost looks like it's a video. So then going back into our transition, you can see how that all really comes together here. One thing I wanna do is add Gaussian blur on the background image. That way it's not in focus at the beginning. So if we go ahead and keyframe that up, you can see it's a little out of focus. And then as we get closer, it should come into focus. And then I think the one and final thing to kind of sell this right here is adding another shake, but one of these hit ones, like something like a, like a twitch or like a light shake. Let's go ahead and do twitch here. And then like, as it comes through the window, it will kind of like have like this impact. And I actually don't like the way Twitch looks. So let's go ahead and do something maybe a little bit more subtle, like quick. And if you're just selected on that shake sauce layer, you can actually just go ahead and replace the shake by just clicking the new one on. And I'm just going through a few ones to see which one looks best. And I ended up liking this kind of vertical hit here, but again, I think the intensity might just be a little bit too much. So let's go to the separate dimensions, turn down the intensity of it a little bit, and then also maybe the motion blur just down a tad as well. So then it kind of just has a nice little finish to the transition. And there you go. That's pretty much the transition. You can go through and customize it and add little different elements there, but that's pretty much the basis of doing like these infinite zoom transitions, just duplicating your layer a few times, adding the 3D camera, adding some shakes, some optics compensation, some distorts to make it look a little bit more smooth. And uh, that is how you do the transition. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I'd appreciate it if you drop a like. And if you wanna try out Shake Sauce too, I'll have it linked down in the description right next to that seven day free trial. That way you can try it out all 100% risk-free. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this one. Peace.